Without a doubt, technology plays a major role in the lives of high schoolers. Many teenagers have access to a computer at home and spend a great deal of time surfing the Internet and chatting with friends in chat rooms. As a teacher, you have a unique opportunity to capitalize on these habits and use them to enhance your students' education. You may already be aware of some of the main types of technology you'll come in contact with at school, software, hardware, and the Internet. We're going to look at examples of each of these types of technology and ways in which they can be used. Let's start with software. You'll find many uses for applications such as those from the Microsoft Office system. For example, you could use a word processor application such as Microsoft Office Word to create a handout outlining requirements and due dates for papers or reports, such as one comparing religions in modern India. Students could use a presentation program, such as Microsoft Office PowerPoint, to create a slideshow summarizing a unit about Africa. The slideshow might contain slides with text, maps of the continent and countries, and audio recordings of music from various tribes. They might also create a spreadsheet comparing the major industries of various African countries to include in the report. You can also make audiobooks available for students to listen to. You might want to arrange for a selection of titles related to your subject. For example, you could include audiobooks about the geography of the Amazon River, explorers who charted the river, and the role the river plays today in the culture and economy of South America. Let's take a moment to stop and review the software we've explored so far. Answer this question and then click Next to move on in the lesson. If you're teaching geography, you might also have students play a game such as Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego? Travel the World with Timmy or GeoCycle USA. Games are also available at many websites. Although some of these games are designed for younger students, even simple games can offer a fun break from textbooks while still teaching basic information. Now let's talk about hardware, which is often used with some of the software we've just discussed. One of the examples that comes to mind is the personal computer. There is also the audiobook reader, which is used with the audiobooks we've just discussed. If you're looking for additional hardware to use with your computer, you can use an LCD projector. You can project a map of Europe on a whiteboard and have students use dry erase markers to trace Napoleon's military campaigns on the board. Similarly, you can project a map using an overhead projector and have students identify cities using wet erase markers on the transparency. Another great way to use technology is to show DVDs or videos. In addition to documentaries, you can also show movies related to your subject matter. For example, you might show a movie about Hercules when you're discussing Greek mythology. Cameras are also great tools for the classroom. For example, if you're studying Greek and Roman architecture, you can have students use a digital camera to take pictures of buildings that represent these different styles. Government buildings, such as city halls and libraries, often contain Greek or Roman architectural elements. Once again, let's stop to think about what we've learned. Take a moment to think about other ways to use a digital camera in class, and then list them in the space provided. When you have finished, click Next. In addition, video cameras can play a part in learning. For instance, you might have two students choose a current world leader to interview on tape. 
One student would be the leader, and one would be the interviewer, asking questions about the leader's life. Then the class, as a whole, can watch each interview and get an overview of politics around the world. Now let's move on to the Internet. There are so many resources available on the Internet, it's impossible to name them all. But there are several tools you'll definitely want to explore. For example, you may have a great curriculum, but there might be times when you want to customize a lesson. Here, we we'll list a couple of good sites to get you started. When you're looking for something specific about a topic, such as average yearly rainfall in a rainforest, you can use a search engine like Google.com. Students can also use search engines. For example, they can search for information for a paper about apartheid in South Africa using yahooligans.com or NetTracker. You can also use websites such as MapQuest or Yahoo Maps to create and print maps online. For instance, you can locate a map of Brazil to insert into a Word document and create a geography exercise. You might also want to visit GoogleEarth.com to locate a satellite image of Brazil. You can project the image on a screen and compare it to the topographical map. It's time for our last review. This time, try to think of other ways you might use map sites such as MapQuest.com or Google.com in your classes. Click Next to move on when you have finished. Another possibility for obtaining information on the Internet is a chat room. Chat rooms allow you to communicate with teachers all over the world. Your students can use chat rooms, too. You can use a site such as kidlink.org to locate chat partners from a country you're studying, such as Ireland. Students can then exchange information about their culture, religion, or education with their chat partner. Similarly, a discussion board is great for exchanging information with other teachers. And again, students can also use discussion boards to share their thoughts and gain other students' perspectives on current events, such as an election or the Olympics. Another great tool on the Internet is a paper submission site, such as turnitin.com, which allows students to upload their papers to a website. The advantage of a site like this is that it offers free plagiarism searches, peer review tools, and grading and marking tools. This allows teacher feedback and student response at any time, not just in a teacher-student conference. While we've given a few examples of technology in the classroom, there really are endless possibilities. Take some time to think of how technology could be applied to lessons in your classroom to enhance your teaching and your students' learning. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.